you guys. It's Sade and I'm back with a summer plant update video. My last plant update was in April, so I have quite a bit of news to share. Um, obviously, it's been an entire season, so all summer I haven't posted one of these videos. Um, I did have like a lot of trips and stuff. Well, not a lot, but I had some longer trips and stuff planned, like my honeymoon and various other trips and just like work and summer life. So some of my plants have suffered from that. There's definitely a few plants that I lost um, during this season. Um, but for the most part, since it is summer, plants have been wanting to grow, wanting to thrive. So um, a, we have a lot more good than bad, basically is what I'm trying to say. And I just can't wait to share that with you guys. Since we're going through a whole season, let me stop talking and let's just get to it. And as always, we're gonna start with those worst plant updates. So the plants that didn't do so well, let's do it. All right, so the first few plants that I wanna talk about are the ones that are no longer with us. So I'm just gonna list them off and then I might insert a picture of like the last healthy photo of them if I have one. So I know off the top of my head that I lost at least two plants. One was a Fatonia. It was a small Fatonia that lived in a two inch pot. Um, it was just too hard for me to keep up with the watering for that. It needed to be in a humidity dome, like it needs a greenhouse. And one of my goals this summer was to build a terrarium and I never got to that. It's not too late, but it's too late for that plant to be in the terrarium. So unfortunately, I just kind of let it go. It was crisping up. I know that they come back from that death period, that they come back from anything, but I had already had it come back from death once and I didn't want to do it again. So I just threw it out and I'm not going to get another Fetonia until I'm able to put it in a terrarium. I already have the fish tank for the terrarium and everything. I just have to bug her down and do it. And I didn't put that in there alone because it's a huge fish tank and I didn't want that small two inch pot to be in there by itself. So we'll get to that when we get to it hopefully soon, because I would love to have like a little self-sustaining greenhouse. Um, the next plant that I lost was my prayer plant. And I'm actually kind of shocked by this because it was doing fine. And all of a sudden, I don't know if the summer heat just became too much for it and it needed more humidity than I was giving it, but it just started crisping up. And it especially started crisping up right before my honeymoon, which was a longer vacation. And I had someone come and water my plants, but I kind of knew that I might not see that one again. So for the prayer plant, I left the prayer plant on the kitchen counter by itself. And um, yeah, when I came back, it was by itself and it was totally crisp. I was expecting it, but I was still kind of shocked. It hurt to see the prayer plant like that. Um, but I mean, it is what it is. I've been eyeing the lemon lime version of that plant anyway, and I had the red Maranta, so I've been eyeing the lemon lime or lime green Maranta version. Maybe that's, maybe I had that in the back of my head when I made the decision to just leave it, but I don't know. It's just a plant, um, you know, obviously I would love it if it were still here, but I don't know what happened. I definitely think that I need a greenhouse. And that plant and me needing a greenhouse is gonna tie into the plant that you see next. So brace yourself, um, this is gonna be pretty bad. Okay, you guys, so this is my selby plant. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. You, these are my humidity loving plants. So the plants that are doing the worst for me are my humidity loving plants. I mean, so obviously it's dry in here. It's hard for me to deny that it's dry in this apartment, obviously, because they are just not doing well. I'm not doing anything differently. I've been watering them like twice a week, like usual. And one of them is gone and this one looks like this. And so a greenhouse is in my near future, hopefully. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I will not throw this away and just leave it on the counter like I did the prayer plant though because this plant is special to me and I want it to turn around. I want it to come back. Um, I'm just kind of sad that it requires so much TLC, but I think for this I'm willing to like invest in a greenhouse because I really want this to stick around. 
Now it's sun, it's propagation is doing a little bit better. So let me show you that one. So this is the propagation from that plant. It's not really a propagation, I just divided it. So I divided this baby from that big one and it's doing a little better, just one leaf, definitely not as crispy as the other ones. Um, one that's probably never gonna unfurl unless I, this is like almost hard as a rock. This is softer. This is probably never going to unfurl unless I stick it in a humid in the greenhouse. Um, it just I can tell it's not going to unfurl. Actually, I don't even think I can manually manually unfurl this. Like I'm trying, and I don't think that I could if I wanted to. It's literally like crisped together at this point. The last kind of bad thing that happened when I got back from my honeymoon is I had fungus gnats galore. This fungus gnat infestation is unique in that they're not flying around my house, which I'm grateful for, like knock on wood. They're not flying around my house, but every time I go to like touch a plant's soil, they all come up like and out into the open and I'm just like, okay, whatever. There's a lot more in the sticky traps than I've ever seen before, like ever. So I don't know. I don't know. It's just my first summer with so many plants. So I guess this is just part of the deal. I don't know. But whatever, we're dealing with it. It's going to be okay. And we're moving forward. So let's talk about, let's move on. The next thing that I've been super excited to highlight has been my propagation box. I got this idea from Wild Fern on YouTube. So she does propagation box with boxes with perlite and I've been propagating in perlite a lot more these days, but I have never had a propagation box be a success. This is my first time. This is also my first time doing so with uh, perlite. I've been, I've done like a dome with sphagnum moss before and every single plant that I put in sphagnum moss has rotted on me. So I'm just so glad that I found perlite um, because this has been a huge success. So we're gonna open this up, we're gonna go through it and you're gonna see a lot of my new plants. Well, first of all, let me show you before we even do that. I would like to show you how much humidity lives in this box. This is amazing. Um, every time I've seen this much humidity with my sphagnum moss plants, I get to them and they're dead. But this humidity has been here since I created the box about a month ago. No rotting plants. Super, super, super happy about this setup. Okay, this is just a regular plastic box that I ordered off of Amazon. We already talked about the great humidity that's in here. Um, let's start with this plant here that I just potted up into soil yesterday. This is a philodendron painted lady. It was propagating in the perlite, so not in soil, but like in here in the perlite up until yesterday. I got it with, I think, two leaves and it has put out three leaves in like four weeks which I think is pretty amazing. It has a new leaf coming in and I put it back in the box, though it's in soil because I wanted to keep that good humidity. Obviously, um, it's, it's really humid in here and since it's so small, I tend to forget to water the smaller plants. This is actually where the Fetonia live and I think that I always forgot about the Fetonia because it was such a small plant. I don't wanna forget about this painted lady, so I put it in here just to keep the humidity up and to not forget about it. <laughs> this is the mama version of that painted lady. I thought that I was also gonna pop this painted lady up yesterday when I potted up this one, but um, these, this painted lady, her roots were not ready. Um, yesterday I put it in here. I found a way to squeeze it in here. This leaf was kind of stuck on this leaf, but as soon as I put it in here, the leaf popped out. So this all happened within like a day, like overnight, literally. Okay, down here we have a Syndapsis, Skindapsis Pictus Exotica. These two are Philodendron Brazil cuttings. Well, I don't know if it's two or three in there. I don't wanna disturb them too much, but right here we have um, a mystery node cutting. I got this as a mystery node in a 
Facebook plant purchase. I still don't know what it is, but it's kind of just looking like a, another syndapsis without its variegation yet because I have a baby syndapsis like regular sand pothos and this is what the babies look like. I'm excited to see what it is. I don't, I'm not sure if anyone has any ideas what this plant is. If it looks like anything you have in your care, please let me know because at this point it's still a mystery note. This is a um, philodendron. This is a variegated philodendron burl marks. Um, it lost its leaves and so it turned into a wet stick propagation. And as you can see, some growth points are activating there since it's been in the box here. This is a vanilla orchid cutting. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing with this. I got it with one tiny root on it and it's not doing anything. I've had it for like, I feel like three months and it has not done anything at all. We're gonna see if the box changes anything for this plant, but I mean, it feels kind of like a waste of money because every YouTube video that I see about orchid propagation, they have like a plant with at least like two or three leaves and I got one, I got a plant with only one. So I don't know if anything will ever come of this. I don't know where a new leaf could even grow off of this. It's just, I don't know. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it. It's obviously not dead. So I don't know. I just think maybe I got um, duped. <laughs> with that one so that is the propagation box all right this will not turn into a walkthrough i promise but i just wanted to update you guys on this money tree and one of my updates i shared how badly this money tree was doing it was doing so poorly and it has completely turned around um, me and my husband both said that it seemed like we woke up one day and this plant just exploded with growth so I do truly think that it was a lighting issue because as soon as I put it by this light, this plant is like three times fuller than it was in that video that I, that last update that I showed. So it's enjoying the summer clearly and it looks so much better. And while we are up walking around, I of course want to shout out my Monstera as always, such a beautiful plant. But this summer, I finally invested in grow lights. So that's the update, not how beautiful my Monstera is, though it is very beautiful. New leaf, or newest leaf, it has plenty of new leaves coming out. But yes, I invested in grow lights. I knew that I wanted this Monstera to live here, and every time I put it here, it just suffered visibly. And so the only way to make it work, since it's so far from any windows, was to get a grow light. I personally think that this is so aesthetically pleasing. I don't know, it's like an industrial light. And obviously I wanted something that shone directly down into the plant. And so I found this, and I think that this is just such a lovely setup. It has a long way to go before it ever hits the light. So I think that this is perfect for now. And some of that light also hits my um, Pothos Enjoy, which I absolutely love right now. This is so beautiful and lush. Perfect. This is like the perfect situation. This is exactly what I wanted. Um, I leave this grow light on for, it was 10 hours, but I literally just changed it to 12 hours just before this video. And it's on a smart socket, so it turns on and off by itself. It is absolutely perfect. And I have one more grow light. So if we walk over, excuse my Crocs, I have this system here. Um, there are usually plants up there, but I have them down because I am gonna talk about them in a minute. So this is um, a system because this bookshelf is so far from the west facing window that plants were just not doing well here and I want it to style this plant shelf. I don't love this setup as much as my Monstera setup. Like this is not how I want this to look, but it'll do for now. And yeah, this is my Calathea just repotted yesterday. I think it was trying to rot on me, but I think it's absolutely beautiful. This is the newest leaf. My satin pothos. Oh, I have a question actually. Hold on. I was not planning on talking about this plant, but since the camera touched the plant, I figured now is a good time to ask. 
Does anyone know if this leaf is a different species than the rest of this plant? Because, I mean, I'm sure you can see why. It is so silvery and it looks so, like these two leaves look so much different from these leaves. Like all, literally any of the other leaves, it looks so much different. But this was all given to me in the same pot. Like I purchased all of these plants together you know, in one pot. And so I'm just curious as to if this is just highly, highly, highly variegated or if it's a different kind of plant. If anyone knows, please let me know because I'm just curious. This is my Monstera adansonii. This is me. Okay, this is my Monstera adansonii. And it's so isolated from the others because about a week or two weeks before vacation, my honeymoon, I saw some webbing on it, which is indicative of spider mites. So I treated it for spider mites and it's been isolating for like four weeks. So hopefully it's okay. I went on vacation and literally all of this growth, like when I went to my honeymoon, the highest vine was up here. And then when I got back after a week of vacation, these vines were all the way down here. Like, I just think that's amazing. It exploded with growth being in the heat. And um, I don't know, I haven't seen any webbing, but I believe that I'm gonna keep it isolated for a few more weeks before I move it back to its home with everyone else. This is my beautiful, beautiful Adansonii. And I plan to cut off these vines. I'm just, I don't want to cut them off because it's reminding me of how much it grew in that time away. But I will be cutting them off, probably putting them back down at the bottom and letting it start over. Um, but yeah, this moss pole though, it's getting a little shaky. So I don't know if it'll be able to sustain too much, too many more vines. Um, anyway, I just kind of wanted to show you guys that. So beautiful. I have a few more plants to share before I close out this video and um, these are all positive things. So let's start with this Hoya. I think this is just a regular Hoya pubocalyx and I got this in a swap, a plant swap, and it's been pretty dormant just putting out roots for a few week, a few months. I got it a few months ago and it's finally starting to put out a growth point. I'll just show it in a close-up. It's finally starting to grow, as are a lot of my plant swap plants that I also got in that same swap. So I think that the plants that I got in my last swap are finally settled into their new home because they're all shooting out growth at the same time. Um, including, you know which one, let me show you. So, this is a plant that I also got at the same time as that Hoya Pupil Calyx. This is my Monstera Algo that I got for $15 in a raffle at a plant swap. And, <laughs> okay, I'm just trying to contain my excitement, but let me tell you guys the story. So three days before my honeymoon, this growth point started activating. Like really, it was all, it was always activated. It was activated when I got it in my care, but it was the same size for like weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. And then right before it was time for me to go <laughs> on vacation, it started growing into a leaf like three days before. And I was devastated because I would not be able to witness the growth of my first monster algo leaf like with being here with it every day i was devastated i was terrified i was anxious i was like i have to be there to watch it every single day or else the new leaf won't make it um but it made it i had a family member come and check the plant so i tried to time it to where i could water it myself without having someone that i i mean someone else water it um, but it just did not work out that way and i did not want to risk rot so you guys i had to not water it when i did my big water before the vacation and i had to have my family member water this plant which is not a huge deal but I knew that if I watered it that day before I left, I was taking a risk and I knew that in a few days it would be good to go. So I trusted someone else to water it and the leaf is here. It's made it. Um, I just, I just cannot believe it. 
It has a lot of marbling. I wouldn't say a lot of marbling, but it definitely has some visible marbling. You probably can't see it that much because the new leaf is still so light green because it's a baby. Um, but once it gets darker, I believe the marbling will stand out more. And I just am so happy. I'm so happy that I finally got my first aloe leaf. So this is a string pot of string of hearts. I have a really, really long string of hearts. Well, it's really long to me. Um, mature string of hearts that I decided to try the butterfly propagation method on. And so this is the result of that. I used the butterfly propagation method from Harley G's Instagram video, I mean not Instagram, from Harley G's YouTube video. What she did is she cut up lots of small hearts, like pairs of hearts, and she put them on sphagnum moss. She watered the moss for like, I don't know, until she saw roots, and then she put the sphagnum moss directly on soil. And that's exactly what I've done to propagate this new basket of string of hearts. I don't think that I need two baskets of string of hearts, but I just really wanted to propagate it, because, propagate my plant because it was growing super long. And this is the result. So maybe I'll have like a full basket to share with someone one day. Um, these cute little growth points are coming up and in no time this is going to be just as long as the one that I have. It's mama. So I just think this is super cool. Okay, two more. This is my philodendron Brazil, and when I first got this plant, it was around Christmas. I specifically remember because I had to write an email. The reason I wrote an email is because I got this plant in my care with mealy bugs on it. So I had to write an email to the shop. I was intending to just tell them that they might have a mealy bug infestation and that they want, might want to check it out. I didn't expect reimbursement because I probably should have checked the plant better before I went out the store with it, but I did get reimbursed. So I eradicated the mealybugs. I have not, knock on wood, I have not seen a mealybug since. So luckily it did not spread. Um, but the plant started rotting. <laughs> I had a full pot, it started rotting. And so I decided that I was gonna put it in Letka. It did not do well for me in Letka. It was just like a rotting mess. It was so stringy, it was horrible. Like I went through like, three or four different repots with this. I just decided to start completely over. I propagated what was left of what I had because I did not have much left. I propagated what was left. I didn't try to save any of the old vines. And oh my gosh, I got this in December. And after eight months, now it's August, after eight long months, I think I have this plant in a home where it can live and not rot and have a happy life and it's finally putting out growth like it was not at a point where it could grow for so long it just kept rotting it wouldn't adapt to the medium that i put it in whether that was soil or like leka and now i think we have it i hope that you like this home planty it's starting to grow i know it doesn't look like much now but this is amazing when we consider what this plant has been through. And just because we're talking about it, I kind of just want to show off my philodendron silver stripe, which is doing great. It is very slow growing, but it's also very beautiful. I can't wait to be able to make this a full pot. So these two, they're coming around and I'm so happy about it. We've made it to the last plant that I want to talk about today. This is my philodendron micans um, propagation. So I put two cuttings into this um, four inch, I think this is a three inch pot, not four inches. And I just think this is absolutely beautiful. It has these like pink vines, this pink sheath on it, and the leaves come out so velvety. So, I mean, there's not much to say about it. I kind of just wanted to show it off because this propagation is growing so beautifully. And this is the mama here. She is almost as long as the floor. And um, I actually gave her a haircut today. And instead of propagate putting the cuttings in here, I put the cuttings back in the top because I want this plant to get much fuller. But um, I think that my last update this summer is that the philodendron micans is my favorite plant. <laughs> Can I make a statement so bold? I don't know, but I don't know. This summer has just showed me that like, I love the philodendron micans. Like I love this propagation. 
I don't need two my cans in my home, but like I could easily trade this or sell it, but will I? I don't know, like this is just so beautiful. Um, so I kind of just wanted to show you guys that. I hope that you guys enjoyed this summer plants update video. Um, please let me know how you felt about the video. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments, any feedback, um, and let me know what your favorite plant of mine was that I showed in today's plant updates video. Um, otherwise, that's going to be it for today. And I've been trying to be more active with my plant Instagram. Um, it's a little easier to post there than to sit down and film a video. So you'll definitely see more updates there if you want to follow. It's at Sade Alexis Plants. And that is going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you on the next one. Bye.